Hitting sixth, designated hitter, Blake Berry. Here come the changes. Brett Malazzo is up a spot to seventh in the order. He starts in center field. Hitting eighth and catching Blake Grant Parks. Rounding out the lineup for the Boomers, his first appearance of the series, Wyatt Staff, and he starts at third base. It is a cool one tonight here in Quebec, but the, cloud, the crowd is electrified. For game three of this Frontier League Championship Series, and as the ball makes its way down to second base, I say tick-tock, my friends. It's boomer time. From the deafening sounds of Stad Kanak, I'm Tim Calderwood, glad to have you alongside for game three of the Frontier League Championship Series and the fans are already chanting. Alec Craig will step in to begin the ball game for the Boomers. Michael Austin's first pitch is outside and we are underway. First pitch coming at 6.20 central time. 7.20 in the east. Austin toes the first base side, his 1-0 pitch to Craig. Locates over the inside corner, one and one. If you'd like to join the broadcast, you can email T Calderwood at boomersbaseball.com. T C A L D E R W O O D at boomersbaseball.com. I'd love to hear from you. Austin winds and throws, and Alec Craig lofts the 1 1 into left center. Jonathan Lacroix over to his right to put it away. And there's one down here in the top half of the first. For the Boomers, it is huge to get off to a good start tonight and try and take this crowd out of the equation. Could be easier said than done. I have a feeling this crowd's going to be in it all night long, regardless of what's happening with their team. Lacroix in center field for the Capitals. Tristan Pompey returning. He's in left field. He was hurt during the division series for Quebec. He's back in the lineup, first appearance of the championship series. And in right, it's Mark Antoine Lebrun. Braxton Davidson takes the first pitch outside. 1-0. Kyle Crowell is at third as Austin kicks and throws, and Davidson with a big swing and a miss. Jordan Manduli at short, David Glode at second, TJ White, the first baseman. Jeffrey Parra behind the plates. One one pitch, a called strike to Davidson, one and two. Michael Austin in his first start of the postseason. He threw an inning in two thirds. In his first debut as his one two just misses inside. Home plate umpire is Yves Lemontaine. Hugh Lafreniere at first, Tim McCaffrey at third. As the pitch misses down low to Davidson and the count is full. Davidson at 244 during the regular season, 18 homers and 59 RBIs. 3-2 from Austin, swung on and missed, strike three. And so Davidson down swinging, two up and two down for Austin here in the top half of the first. During the regular season, Austin finished eight and six with a 5.11 ERA, worked 107 and a third innings, during which he walked 19 and struck out 75. What does that mean? Well, it means Boomers are gonna have to do some work against him as the first pitch is at the knees to chase Dawson 0-1. He did give up a lot of hits, 120. Opposition bats 280, but as you know, one of the strengths of the Boomers throughout the season has been free base runners. 0-1 pitch to Dawson is downstairs. One ball and one strike. What do I mean by free base runners? Well, I mean base runners reaching via the walk, the hit by pitch, or the error. 1-1 pitch to Dawson. Outside. 2-1 the count on Chase Dawson. Top of the first, two away. Scoreless ball game. Here from Stad Kanak. 
the 2 1. It's low to Dawson, ball three. Three ten for Dawson during the year that led the Boomers. He played in 95 of the 96 games. Five homers, 64 driven in, set a league record with 24 triples. 3 1 pitch is upstairs, ball four, and the Boomers have a free base runner. Counting the postseason, of which tonight is game number six, so number 102 overall on the season. Boomers have drawn a walk in 101 of those contests. Mike Hart steps in to have a go with a runner at first and two down in this scoreless first inning. The pitch from Austin. Check swing called strike 0-1. Mike Hart hit 277 with 19 homers and 48 knocked in for the Boomers. Decent lead for Dawson at first. The 0-1 from Austin off the plate away and low. One ball and one strike. At TC Popcorn on Twitter if you would like to join the broadcast. At TC Popcorn on Twitter. In addition to that email address I gave you earlier. There goes Dawson on the 1-1. The pitch is high, and Para can't handle. It'll be a stolen base for Chase Dawson, and he is into scoring position with two away. Boy, that was a pseudo pitch out on the offering. Para just couldn't transfer from the glove to the hand. Rain is possible late tonight here in Quebec. They do have vendors walking around here as well, which is pretty cool. When we came here in July, I love this place, and I love it even more now with a capacity crowd on hand. 2-1 pitch. Down low, ball three. Hart thought it was ball four. Let me switch my weather.com from Celsius to Fahrenheit to tell you the game time conditions. Yeah, it is cool. 59 degrees. It's dark up here as well in the Northeast. No twilight right now as the 3-1 pitch makes its way to the plates and Hart fouls it straight back. Officially 59 and cloudy with an east wind at eight miles an hour. No score, top of the first. Chase Dawson standing in scoring position with two away. Three and two the count on Hart. Quebec won both games in the divisional series here at home against the Ottawa Titans after they lost game one. They were the best home team in the league this year. 40 wins against only 18 losses. They were just the second team in league history to win 40 home games. 3-2 pitch. Hart takes, strike three called. Two strikeouts for Austin in the inning. We'll go to the bottom of the first. No score. This is Schaumburg Boomers baseball.
Chase Dawson drew a two-out walk, stole second, and was left there in the top of the first. Aaron Glickstein, meanwhile, a very quick 1-2-3 bottom of the frame. We head to the second in Game 3 of the Frontier League Championship Series, no score. Clint Hardy leading off against Michael Austin, and the first pitch is a fastball high, 1-0. Hardy was not with the team in July, but some rule changes as the year progressed have allowed him to make the journey as he takes a strike one and one. 288, eight homers, 55 runs batted in for Schaumburg during the season. And put it this way, he is a very, very big piece of this lineup and the Boomers are thrilled that he's here as he strikes the one one into the air first base side. And it'll carry out a play into that standing room only picnic area on the first base side. They have picnic areas on the first base side and the third base side here at Stodd Canock. They were filled to capacity before the ball game where there was pregame drinks, food, and entertainment. Here comes the 1-2 pitch from Austin. And it's a little bit outside, 2-2 two and two the counts. Again, Yves Lamontagne behind the plate, Hugh Lafreniere at first, and Tim McCaffrey at third. The 2-2 pitch from Austin. Turned on left side foul past the Schaumburg dugout. Got to give a shout out to my buddy Scott. I know there is a big watch party going on at his place outside today. Hope you enjoy the broadcast. Cheer loudly. Make sure your neighbors think you're annoying. The 2-2 are ripping a miss. Strike three. Strikeout number three for Austin. Michael Austin did start against the Boomers in the final game of that series after the All-Star break. He worked five innings, earned the win. That was a rain-shortened contest. And he faces Blake Berry. The first pitch is down low to Berry, 1-0. Austin walked one and struck out four in that game. Berry joined the Boomers for that series with Quebec. The 1-0 outside, two balls, no strikes. And that was as a result of a trade for future considerations with the Capitals. And he drove in a run against his former team in his first at bat. Here's the 2-0. Swing and a miss, 2-1. That was his first at bat with Schaumburg back in July. He would love to find a way to drive in a run here and put his team in front in the second inning. We are scoreless from Stad Kanak, the 2-1. Foul back, 2-2 two two the count on Barry who hit 282 in his 39 games. Three home runs, 19 driven in. Did see some time in the infield, also worked in the corner outfield slots. But Jamie Bennett has been using him as the full-time DH of late. 2-2 Two -two from Austin. Swing and a foul tip at the plate. Para couldn't hang on, and so Barry has new life. Arrived about 1 o'clock in the morning yesterday. The main group did. The 2-2 pitch. Strike three called at the knees. And that is out number two. I don't know if Para thought it was out number three or what. He was sprinting over to the Quebec dugout on the first base side. Fourth strikeout for Michael Austin. Two away in the second of a scoreless game three in this Frontier League Championship Series. <laughs> Seeing lots of tweets coming in from Boomers fans who are excited to have my broadcast on Flow Sports. Glad to hear it. Two away. Brett Malazzo, the batter. First pitch to him is down low, ball one. He has had an incredible postseason of late. We'll bring his full piece of postseason numbers in his next at bat, but he really started to surge at the end of the season as he takes the 1 0 over the outside corner, 1 and 1. They do have the old manual scoreboard in right center field, as someone has pointed out. Here comes the 1-1 pitch. Malazzo takes over the inside corner. Malazzo hitting 292 during the season. Couple homers and 36 knocked in. The Boomers are forcing Austin to work. He is over 30 pitches early. The 1-2 pitch, high and away. Two balls, two strikes. That could loom large later. The 2-2 offering. 
low, and it is full to Malazzo. Both Austin and Aaron Glickstein for the Boomers have pitched in the postseason, but in relief. Full count to Malazzo with two outs and the base is empty. Austin throws. And it's a line drive in a right field for the game's first hit. Brett Malazzo gets the party started with a base hit to right field. Boomers have had runners on base with two outs in each of the first two against Michael Austin. Austin is an experienced right-hander for the Capitals. What do I mean by experienced? Well, he's a guy who has been around the Frontier League for a time, and he's been on some very good Frontier League teams. As he prepares to face Blake Grant Parks with Malazzo on at first, and the first pitch, a fastball low, 1-0. Austin 6'4", 230 out there on the hill. First taste of pro ball was with the Royals in 2017, where he was a free agent as he throws to first. That came out of uh, Bethune-Cookman in the MEAC. 2017, he was in the Arizona League and the Appley League before he went to Washington for two years, the 1-0. BGP takes a strike, 1-1. One and one. Second start of the series for Blake Grant Parks. He started the opener on Wednesday. Nick Odo started Thursday's game. And a throw to first, close, but Malazzo just back in safely. There are some members of the Schaumburg front office staff who have made the trip. Mike Telusti is here, the angry groundskeeper. Vice President and General Manager Michael Larson, Ali Kobler. Brian Leiter is here. Throw to first, and Malazzo's hung out to dry. T.J. White will chase, and he'll fling it to Glode, who puts the tag on. Have I mentioned I can't hear myself think? Because I can't hear myself think. 1-3-4 on the pickoff at first base, and Malazzo was caught in a moment where he was just standing around. One of the other things that's pretty cool about this is Literally, that they have security guards who come out onto the field between innings at Stodd Canock. We're going to the bottom of the second in game three of the Frontier League Championship Series. No score. This is Chomper Boomers Baseball. Blake Grant Parks was at the plate when Brett Malazzo was thrown out or picked off at first base. And BGP will attack the first offering from Michael Austin, swinging and missing 0-1. Everybody in the Schaumburg dugout is wearing their jackets. That temperature is going to continue to drop. When we arrived yesterday, the first words out of everybody's mouth were, it's cold. Here's the 0-1. BGP fouls away to the right side, nothing at two. BGP started to come on at the end of the year. Ended up with a 271 average, couple of homers, 25 driven in. As he tries to work from behind here, the 0-2 from Austin. Check swing at a high fastball, no ask from Yves Lamontagne. Now he will request the assistance of Hugh Lafreniere. And no swing, you like my French? Gotta credit my friend Dave, who I started talking to last year with the Capitals. Here's the 1-2. 
Into the hole left side, sliding stop by Manduli. Low throw to first, triple hops to the bag in time. That just did not have enough to sneak through the turf here at Stad Kanak. Put a star on it though, a heck of an effort by Manduli. As the leadoff man is retired here in the third. Boomers were able to turn some momentum. Bases loaded, nobody out in Quebec did not score in the second. Wyatt Stapp, his first at bat of the series, takes the first pitch outside ball one. Stapp hit 333 in 14 games with the Boomers during the regular season. He was added at the Frontier League's transaction deadline. And he's got himself a knock through the right side of the infield. Hit number two for the Boomers today. And they've had runners on in each of the first three against Austin. Need to find a way to cash in now. Take advantage as the lineup turns over. It is the second go round. Alec Craig led off the game by flying out to center field. Craig had a couple of hits at a sack fly on Thursday in that 9 to 1 win. The first pitch outside from Austin, ball one. I started to tell you about Austin's career during the last half inning. And I mentioned he was in Washington during the 2018 and 2019 seasons. The one out of the plates, locates inside corner, one and one. It was three and three for the Wild Things in 18, six and eight in 2019, identical 4.08 ERAs in each of those seasons. The one, one, down low, good block by Para. Freezing Wyatt Stapp over at first. Stapp was in my travel crew. There were four flights that took the bulk of us here to Quebec. We actually ended up in Montreal. That's where we all met last night. There was a morning a mid-morning and then two early afternoon flights. I was on an early afternoon flight out of O'Hare into LaGuardia. 2-1 pitch on the ground to the right side. Long way left, Glowed throws the second one. No chance to double up the speedy Hart or Craig hustling up the first baseline. Two of the flights went into LaGuardia, one went to Philadelphia, one went to Toronto to lay over, and then they all ended up in Montreal. My group was Bill Frado, Daryl Thompson, Braxton Davidson, Wyatt Stapp, myself, and our trainer on this trip, Austin Casper. Welcome to the club. Nice way to get initiated. Decent lead at first for Craig, and Austin takes notice, throwing over. Schaumburg's career leader in stolen bases, Alec Craig. Nearly 80 in his two seasons with the team. He's on with two outs in this nothing-nothing game. Austin sets and the pitch high and away. 1-0 the count on Braxton Davidson, who struck out swinging in the first. Brax was 0 for 4 in the ball game on Thursday. He did reach base, though, in the eighth inning, drawing a walk and scoring a run. The Boomers scored six runs in that eighth inning to pull away. And Austin again throws to first. He's got a sneaky move. Wow. Bill Frado better be on his toes over there for Schaumburg. Another throw over and close again. Tom Vaith took over as the manager of Washington and he wanted to use Austin in the bullpen. Austin wanted to start. Austin ended up being traded to Southern Illinois last year and was a starter for the Miners as the 1 0 pitch catches the inside third with a breaker, one ball, one strike. 
Southern Illinois finished 54 and 42, but did not make the playoffs in that pod system a year ago, which featured four divisions. The 1 1 fouled off the foot of Davidson. A game apiece in this Frontier League Championship Series. No score in the top of the third with the series shifting to Canada. Austin was a member of the Wild Things in 2018 when they were in the postseason. They reached the championship series that year before falling to Joliet. The one-two pitch to Davidson. Looping liner into short center. Over the leaping shortstop Manduli. Craig will turn but hold at second base. And for the first time tonight, the Boomers have more than one runner on base. They have two hits in the inning. And a runner has reached scoring position for the second time tonight as well. All of this coming with two outs, though. But the Boomers have been a pretty good two-out team this season. Can Chase Dawson come through and give the Boomers the lead? Capacity crowd is on the edge of their seats, but they've been pretty quiet here in this third inning. As I said, the momentum completely turned with those back-to-back -back strikeouts from Glickstein in the second. First pitch to Dawson. Yanked right side foul, 0-1. Dawson drew a walk in the first and stole second. He was one for four on Thursday with a double and a run. Austin looks back to second. The 0-1 is high and away. In the series, Chase is three out of nine. Boomers are hitting 324. They have been in double-digit hits in both games of this series. Told you Brett Malazzo has been red hot. He's hitting over 600 in the series for Schaumburg. Here's the 1-1. Big swing and a miss as Austin fools Dawson. And it's 1-2. and two. Glad you're along from Stad Canock. I'm Tim Caldwood, voice of the Schaumburg Boomers. Made the venture up here to Canada with the team. No place I'd rather be. Got the sweatshirt on myself today. Here's the one-two. Dawson fights it off. Lunging across the plate and hitting off of the high netting towards the Schaumburg dugout. I say high netting. From dugout to dugout is a high net. Uh, there's a press box actually pretty much directly above me. I guess you could describe my location as a closet. That's kind of the running joke around the Frontier League. I look back to second in the one-two. Swung on a miss, strike three. Five strikeouts for Michael Austin. TJ White walked to lead off the second as he steps in against Glickstein. Waist high set, a look back to second and the first pitch. Inside ball one. Boomers did make a roster move before game three of the series as they activated Tyler Tamaka from the injured list. Tamaka taking the place of Juan Pichardo who was placed on the inactive list. The 1-0. White with a drive to left field. This one's got the distance. It's back, it's gone, and Quebec leads. Have I mentioned it's loud in here? My goodness. TJ White electrifying the crowd with a two run blast to put Quebec in front two to nothing. White hit 26 home runs during the regular season. And he gives the count.
TJ White's two-run homer has given Quebec the lead, striking first in game three as the first offering to Mike Hart from Michael Austin is off the plate away, ball one. Austin was part of that ridiculously experienced pitching staff last year as Hart is jammed. It's off the hands, carrying some into right center, but it's playable for Lacroix to make the catch. And the leadoff man has retired here in the fourth. Yeah, Michael Austin was on that staff. Chase Cunningham was on that staff. Gunnar Kynes, who of course was with the Boomers for a bulk of his Frontier League career. That was a really good pitching staff with Southern Illinois. Clint Hardy attacking the first pitch and fouling it away to the right side. 0-1. Hardy smacks this one pretty well, hit to left. It's deep and back towards the track. Leaping, though, and making the catch near the wall is Tristan Pompey, and Hardy just missed. Boy. Blake Berry steps in. He takes the first pitch. A called strike over the outside corner. Nothing in one. The 0-1 pitch is off the plate away. One ball and one strike. As I mentioned, both of these pitchers do not waste any time out there on the hill. Austin looking for his first perfect frame. And Berry is going to have other ideas as he smacks the 1-1 into right field. Again, it's a two-out hit for Schaumburg. Two-out base runners in each of the first four frames. As I referenced earlier on, they've got to find a way to start an inning with a base runner. Tying run will come to the plate in the form of Brett Malazzo, who singled in his first visit. First pitch to Malazzo is at the knees, a called strike, 0 and 1. The 0 1 pitch, Malazzo puts down a bunt towards third. This is a good one. Crowell's going to charge, and he'll just hold on to it. That was a pretty good idea for him not to throw, and Brett Malazzo could not have rolled it out there any better as he records a bunt single, and the tying runs are on base for Schaumburg with two away. Blake Grant Parks has had some very big hits for the Boomers over the last couple of weeks. Can he add to that total here tonight as the Boomers looking for an answer? Following the two-run homer from T.J. White in the bottom of the third. First pitch to BGP is in for a strike, 0-1. Blake Grand Parks drove home one of the runs in game one's loss at home. It was one for four. Chest tie set for Austin, the 0-1 pitch. Hit high in the air towards right. Angling to his left, Marc-Antoine Lebrun. And he's got space to make the catch. A couple of two-out hits, but the Boomers cannot cash in. Three and a half completes. 2-0 Quebec. This is
Wyatt Stapp steps to the plate to begin the top half of the fifth. T.J. White's two-run homer, the only runs on the board. It came with two outs in the bottom of the third. Frontier League Championship Series game number three. Stapp swings and misses at the first pitch from Austin, 0-1. Worth noting that the Boomers in the postseason have been a team that has been regularly playing from ahead. Here's the 0-1 to the plates. And it's over the outer third, strike two. In all four of the postseason wins, Schaumburg has scored first. In their lone loss, which was in game one of the championship series on Wednesday at home. Or Quebec first. Out away. I will say it is a much big, bigger difference in nothing versus six to nothing, which is what the score was in that contest against the Capitals on Wednesday. I know there are some Boomers fans besides the front office who have made the venture up here to Canada as well. The two strike pitch down low to Wyatt Stapp, one ball and two strikes. The one-two pitch, a rip and a miss. Strikeout number six in the ball game for Michael Austin. Leadoff man has retired, something that he has done in every single inning thus far. Boomers do have five hits. They've had a runner in scoring position on a couple occasions, but in both instances, it's been with two outs. Alec Craig steps to the plate as he begins the third go-round against Austin tonight. First pitch. Stays back on a breaker, fouls the way to the left side, 0-1. Craig is 0-2 tonight. He's hitting 286 in the postseason with six hits, including a double and an RBI. The 0-1 just outside. That RBI came on Thursday, his only run batted in so far in the postseason. Here comes the 1-1, and it's fouled back, 1-2. Alec Craig asking for time. He's making his way back over towards the on-deck circle. One of his teammates is going to lob the rosin bag to him, which he'll pound around a bit to try and get a better grip on that stick with two strikes. For the man who led the league in walks with 92 a Schaumburg single season record. One, two to the plate. Foul back, good defensive swing by Alec Craig. As he works here leading off or with one out in the fifth inning and the Boomers trailing two to nothing. Austin is over 70 pitches. Here's the one, two. And it's outside, two and two. If they can continue to make him work, at the very least, hopefully get him out after six and get into that Quebec bullpen, which does have a few cracks. Quebec had the best pitching team in the league this year. The 2-2 two -two to Craig. Inside corner at the knees, strike three called, and Craig disagrees as he is down looking. Seven strikeouts for Austin. Braxton Davidson slowly making his way towards the plates. Davidson singled in the third. He's one for two. Austin's first pitch. Check swing, did he go? Yes, according to Tim McCaffrey over at third. The 0-1, fouled straight back, nothing in two.
No runs, five hits, and an error for Schaumburg as Austin looks for his first 1 2 3 inning. The 0 2 pitch. Just upstairs. Good take by Davidson. Crowd wanted it, as did Austin, who had started making his way back towards the Quebec dugout. The 1 2 just outside. Again, it's very similar to Aaron Glickstein in the way that Austin works. His 2-2 pitch to Davidson. Yanked right side past the diving T.J. White. Boomers have another base runner, and yet again it comes with two outs. There are six hits on the board for the Boomers in the ball game. Five of those six have come with two outs. Chase Dawson steps in. He's 0 for 1 with a walk and a strikeout. Game 3 of the Frontier League Championship Series. Boomers down 2 0 in the top of the fifth. Chase Dawson spanks the first pitch foul up the first baseline. 0 and 1. Davidson average lead, the 0-1 pitch to Dawson. Sharply hit right side off the webbing of the glove of Glode and into right field. Davidson around second into third. Should be a base hit for Chase Dawson, and the Boomers have the tying runs on base with two away. Mike Hart will make his way to the plate representing the go-ahead run tonight. I believe they put an error on the board for the copy tiles. First and third with two away. Yeah, they called it E4. It's the first pitch is down low to Mike Hart, ball one. First and third with two outs. The pitch from Austin. High fly ball in the air towards right. Is there room in the corner up against the netting? No for Mark Antoine Lebreu. Can Mike Hart take advantage? A throw to first to keep an eye on Chase Dawson, who did steal back in inning number one. One one pitch, Hart takes outside corner strike two. He's seen a steady diet of breakers of late. Dawson at first and Davidson at third. Top of the fifth tonight. Crowd coming to life with two strikes on Hart. The pitch. Down low, two balls, two strikes. First full season for Quebec as a member of the Frontier League. Last year, several of these players played for Quebec, but it was a team called Equipe Quebec, led by Pat Scalabrini, the manager. They lost to Washington in the playoffs. 2-2 pitch. It's low, and I maybe caught the piece of Mike Hart's bat. No, 
must have caught the bat of heart. Otherwise, they wouldn't be giving him a new baseball. Jeffrey Parra wanting to confirm it is two and two. Hart has some family from the area. I remember when we were here in July, he was walking around with some family downtown when I was having food with Jamie Bennett at a restaurant. Here's the 2-2. Inside corner, strike three called. Seven left on base. Austin's excited as he departs. Boomers leave the tying runs on. Chance after chance after chance. But a whole bunch. Let's get something started before there are two outs. Clint Hardy leads off the six, two nothing Quebec. Tried to check his swing on the first pitch. It's off the hands foul into the netting, 0 and 1. Boy, Aaron Glickstein's only given up two hits. That's it. Unfortunately, one of them left the yard, a two run homer from TJ White, and that's the only offense in the game. There is action in the Quebec bullpen. It's a little hard for me to see in that right field corner as the 0 1 catches the outside corner, nothing and two. That's because they have that party area. So the bullpen is actually more kind of uh, throwing from left to right rather than a traditional bullpen that faces the field of play. It's Frank Muscatello who is up for the Capitals. Pitch count is high for Austin, but he's been very good as the 0-2 catches a piece of Clint Hardy. Leadoff man is on. Let's see if that jump starts the offense. First time tonight that the leadoff man has reached. Hardy tied with Steve McQuayle for the most times hit by a pitch in franchise history. Pat Scalabrini is out of the dugout. Might he be making the move here? Muscatello has been up for the Capitals in the right field corner. All are assembled right now. And Scalabrini is going to gesture to the bullpen. Quebec's going to give a nice round of applause to Austin who leaves. Throwing five shutout frames. He looks up towards the crowd, takes a moment to examine the fans and tips his cap. We've got ourselves a Julie One call, call to the bullpen. Leadoff man is on base. 